Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe, the E1 uh, Bravo Whiskey Victor in the East Coast here in New Brunswick. Making a, a little video tonight on uh, some new developments uh, using the Micro Bit X, the, the all band uh, QRP transceiver. And uh, this is demonstrating the um, new software and uh, new display. Uh, the unit comes with a LCD display, a standard LCD display, and um, VU2 SPF, Sierra Papa Foxtrot SP, in India, has developed a uh, software, and uh, he did it with the BitX, and now uh, is completing the work on the Micro BitX, which again is the all-band transceiver. The unit here, basically uh, a Micro BitX with a full touch control color display, um, three VFOs, we got the M, the A, the B, uh, and back to the M. The M is the memory. We have a hundred memory channels. You can see me dialing through them there. Very easy to dial through. That's uh, FT8. And I'll go back here to, say, 40 meters. It's uh, 7 in the evening here in the East Coast, so 40 meters is the... Uh, more active one right now. So we have the uh, all the bands we can select from here 80, 40, 20, 30, 17, 15 and uh, you can add bands uh, accordingly. Uh, this is your step, your lower upper side band and uh, your tunable BFO here so we can tune it up or down and um, make it uh, sound a little bit uh, more to what you might like to hear higher, lower, etc. Areas where you can save things to memory, a timer. Once it goes into transmit, then um, the timer is active. And if uh, you don't turn the transmitter off within, I think uh, we've defaulted around a minute or uh, 40 seconds. I'm not sure exactly, but that's changeable. It will shut the transmitter off just so you don't inadvertently leave it on. So the unique part about this, everything's touch control. But every button that you see also can be put on as a physical button. I've gotten so used to using this, I hardly use anything else. But uh, I do like to have the band step separately. Uh, I have the volume control separately. And I do have the VFO. Um, so I'll pull back here a little bit, just so you get a little bit better view. This is an old case. It was an APC uh, type battery case I had sitting around for years. Uh, and I started looking at it and I said, you know, I think it'll all work. Um, so as a result, uh, it's inside the unit. I have the cover off, of course, right now. And you can see the uh, bit X. A bit of RF shielding in the back. Some uh, extra filtering. Uh, we've got the board down below. And the blue lights here on this far corner are two regulators, adjustable uh, down voltage regulators. The 12 or 13 volts comes in. And on the one at the top, it, I adjust it down to 9 volts, which I feed the Atmega 2560, which is the controller. And the display is plugged directly into it, so there's no wiring at all, external wiring required. The other um, voltage regulator, which is closest to the red tape here down there as well, is uh, the same thing, but it's adjusted to 5 volts. And um, it feeds uh, the unit over here, the, um, the DDS or the SI5351. That provides the three clocks shielded to the bit X. And this provides the control filters and transmit net. So you can see there's very little wiring actually required, even with this particular setup. Uh, let's have a look here. I'm trying to look from the back here. It's hard to see. But on the bit X, or on the uh, Atmega, I guess we're going to be upside down here for a second. But anyway, let me look around. I get around this side, maybe get a better view. What I've done, so we don't have to use any boards, is I added a strip or so of connectors on the back of the Atmega. It's because at the front of it, it's too close to be able to put jumpers in. So it's a very simple solution. I just put the connectors on the back and also at the top where you see those wires. And there's a strip about eight on the bottom. That way I have access to uh, all the pins I need and don't have to use a, a, any extra particular board. Uh, I've got the USB for programming it right from the front and it's at the back. The rest of these connectors are mostly for interfacing uh, the digital modes, you know, mic in, mic out, extra speaker. Uh, you might be able to look in there and see, I've got a, on the side, 
very large heat sink. Let me not get you too dizzy. And I'll move it over here a little bit. And uh, I put a big honking uh, uh, heat sink in there. So hopefully, you can, there you go. Nice, you look better. And that's the approach from this side, whatever the case is.